an introduction to orchestral speech. In the Stammering Self-Empowerment Programme, we don't advocate the constant use of fluency techniques when speaking. Instead, we suggest that as far as possible, you just simply focus on what you want to say without using any techniques at all, just like non-stammerers do when they speak. The only times when we suggest that you do resort to using a fluency technique are first of all during moments when it's important to speak fluently and when stammering would have significant negative consequences and secondly after you've got stuck in order to quickly and easily get restarted. Orchestral speech is a technique that we recommend that you use during moments when it's important to speak fluently. The other technique which we call the jump is a technique that we recommend that you use to enable you to quickly and easily get restarted when you get stuck. Because orchestral speech is a method to stop you getting stuck in the first place, it can be very useful at times when you need to guarantee that you'll be fluent. For example, when answering the telephone, and when ordering a drink at a bar or buying a ticket on a bus. More generally, it's useful in situations where there's a limited window of opportunity to speak and when it's important to get a message across as quickly as possible. Orchestral speech is also useful when, for one reason or another, a listener has failed to understand something that you've just said. At such times, you can use it to repeat the phrase that was misunderstood. Similarly, it can provide a valuable backup for the occasional times when the jump doesn't work. I discuss how these two techniques can be combined in the module of the online course entitled Combining Orchestral Speech and the Jump. Orchestral speech does have some important limitations. And in particular, it works best and is easiest to employ if you already know exactly what words you want to say. In other words, it works best if you've already formulated the phrase in your head before you start to speak it out loud. Generally speaking, it works best for whole phrases, and it's more difficult to employ for single words. It's also more difficult to employ after you've already started to stammer on a phrase. At such times, it's better to use the jump to get you started again and to get you through to the end of the phrase. To help you understand how orchestral speech works, it's useful to consider it alongside some other ways of speaking that are also very fluency enhancing, such as singing, rhythmic speech, choral speech, and shadowing. What do these four different ways of speaking have in common? You might want to pause the video to think about this for a while to see what answers you can come up with before continuing on to the next slide. OK, so the thing that singing, rhythmic speech, choral speech and shadowing all share in common is that all these ways of speaking force you to pay attention primarily to keeping up, either with the beat, the music or with the people who are speaking or singing. And the side effect of focusing your attention on the forward flow in this way is that your attention is diverted away from what your words sound like. So while your attention is strongly focused on the forward flow, you can't at the same time be checking to see how well or how accurately your words are coming out. And this means that you'll tend not to notice if some of the words don't come out quite as clearly or as accurately as you had intended. Of course, all four of these ways of speaking, that is singing, rhythmic speech, choral speech and shadowing, are very fluency enhancing. The words might not always come out very accurately, but they do tend to come out very fluently. And we're much less likely to stammer when speaking in any of these ways. In fact, there's a general principle here, which I call the fluency accuracy trade-off. Essentially, what this means is that the more that we focus on speaking each word and each sound clearly and accurately, the less fluent we'll be. Whereas the more we focus on being fluent, in other words, on just maintaining the forward flow of our speech, the less accurate we will be. A bit like a seesaw. When our focus on fluency goes up, our focus on accuracy goes down and vice versa. 
I'll talk more about this fluency accuracy trade-off in future talks, as an understanding of it is of central importance to the self-empowerment program. So what is orchestral speech? Well, just like those four ways of speaking I discussed in the previous slides, orchestral speech is a way of speaking that involves focusing more strongly on keeping up with the forward flow of speech than on the accuracy of each individual word or sound. We decided to call it orchestral speech because in many ways it involves a, a very similar experience to playing an instrument in an orchestra or band or singing in a choir. In such situations, you have to focus on the rhythm or timing of the notes that you're playing or the words that you're singing. And then you need to stick to that rhythm and timing no matter what. The timing is more important than the accuracy of the notes. So if you make a mistake and hit a wrong note when you're playing in an orchestra, or if something doesn't come out as intended when you're singing in a choir, you just have to keep going. You can't go back and repair the mistake. You always have to give first priority to keeping up with the beat. Similarly, with orchestral speech, you speak as though you're playing an instrument in an orchestra. The most important thing is simply to keep going. If you make a mistake, don't try to put it right. If you stammer, simply abandon that sound and keep going. Imagine you're part of a chorus and that you have to keep up with them no matter what. Why is orchestral speech useful to people who stammer? To answer this question, it's important to understand that even when they're not stammering, the speech of people who stammer is more error prone than that of non-stammerers. In fact, research has shown that we tend to make approximately twice as many speech errors as non-stammerers. And this leads us to develop the habit of focusing too much of our attention on how well, or how accurately our words are coming out. This over-focus of attention on how accurately we're articulating our words destabilizes our speech production processes and causes us to block. But importantly, in order for our listeners to understand what we're trying to say, it's not necessary for us to say every word accurately. In fact, speech errors are much less of an obstacle to listener comprehension than disfluencies. So as I said in the previous slide, it's better for us to allow our speech errors to occur than to try to stop them. If you make a mistake, don't try to put it right. If you stammer on a word or on a sound, just abandon that sound and keep going regardless. The practice of orchestral speech enables you to ignore your speech errors. And the net result of ignoring those errors is that you become less disfluent and listeners understand you better despite the fact that your speech may be somewhat more error-prone compared to that of non-stammerous speech. It's easiest to use orchestral speech, and it works best if you've already formulated in advance exactly what you intend to say. This is simply because it's easier to maintain the rhythm if you already know what words you're going to use. You can formulate while you're speaking, but things are more likely to go wrong, especially if the topic is complicated, and especially if you have word finding difficulties. Orchestral speech is easiest of all when reading, because when you read, the words are already provided for you, and all you have to do is to decide on the rhythm, the rhythm with which you're going to say them. When it comes to conversational speech, it's not so easy because there's less opportunity to pre-formulate what you want to say. Also, if you do try to pre-formulate during ongoing conversations, it tends to slow you down and make you sound artificial, and you might find it harder to pay attention to what other people are saying. In fact, unless you're a severe stammerer, we don't advocate using orchestral speech in an ongoing way during conversations, although it's fine to use it to get yourself started off in a conversation. So, for example, you might pre-formulate the first phrase or two, say them using orchestral speech, and then continue on just speaking spontaneously without using any technique. This can work particularly well with telephone calls, where listeners rely on the first phrase or two that they hear to work out who's speaking to them. 
Orchestral speech is also a good technique to use when you need to repeat a phrase that a listener has failed to understand. To give you a feel of how orchestral speech works, we've provided some reading exercises that you can try out in your own time after completing this PowerPoint presentation. In order for orchestral speech to work, it's vital that you maintain your intended speech rate. Almost all people who stammer tend to vary their speech rate when they anticipate that they'll stammer. Most stammerers slow down at such time, but some speed up and others alternate between slowing down and speeding up. This tendency to vary our speech rate whenever we anticipate that we're about to stammer is essentially a subtle form of avoidance. It's a learnt response to stammering that, contrary to what most people believe, actually makes stammering worse and entrenches it more deeply. The practice of orchestral speech can help you to overcome this unhelpful tendency. So it's important to remember, in order for orchestral speech to work, it's vital to maintain your intended speech rate, even if you anticipate that you're about to stammer. Don't try to avoid stammering by slowing down or speeding up. If a word doesn't come out right, abandon it immediately and resume speaking on the next word in the phrase. Just like you would if you were singing a song. Stick to your planned rhythm at all costs. You need to be very strict with yourself in this regard. Otherwise, orchestral speech won't work. So just to recap, the way that orchestral speech works is that it forces us to focus our attention on the forward flow of our speech. Focusing on moving forward in this way pulls our attention away from the accuracy of the words we're saying. And as our focus on accuracy diminishes, the tendency to block also diminishes, and we find ourselves spontaneously becoming fluent. To give you an idea of how powerful this method can be, imagine how fluent you are when you sing. The only time stammerers may have a little bit of difficulty when singing is in initiating the very first sound. But as soon as they've got into the flow, they're able to sing completely fluently. Orchestral speech is essentially like singing, except without the melody. The stricter you are in adhering to your planned timing, the more fluent you will be. Here are a few important things to remember while practicing orchestral speech. Most importantly of all, don't slow down when you anticipate a difficult word ahead. Just keep going regardless. If you start finding a bit of difficulty on a sound or a word, don't use force. In fact, if anything, put a little less effort into speaking, as this will help counteract any ingrained tendency to use force to push words out. But whatever you do, keep going. Keep up with the rhythm that you originally planned. If you do block on a word, immediately abandon that word and carry on with the remainder of the phrase. Skip a word or two if necessary in order to keep up with the planned forward flow. Just as you would if you made a mistake playing in an orchestra or singing in a choir. Don't worry about whether your listener will understand you. If they don't understand you, you can always go back and repeat the whole phrase again, from the beginning, in its entirety. One of the things that people who stammer tend to worry about far more than non-stammerers is whether or not people will understand what they say. Indeed, to a large extent, it's this concern that prompts them to pay a lot of attention to monitoring how their words sound and to keep on the lookout for potential speech errors. Because orchestral speech involves focusing as strongly as possible on maintaining the forward flow of speech, it draws our attention away from worrying about whether or not we sound good enough and whether or not the listener is understanding us. And the less that we worry about these things, the more fluent we, our speech becomes. Ultimately, of course, there will be times when the listener doesn't understand what, what we've said. And if this proves to be the case, then it's fine to go back and say the entire planned phrase again. However, when doing this, put somewhat less effort into your second attempt. Remember that the second time round, the listener is far, light, far more likely to understand you correctly 
Firstly, because you've already said most of the words once, and secondly, because he'll be paying more attention. Whatever you do, don't go back and just repeat individual sounds or words that have not been understood. Always repeat the entire phrase. Because single words said in isolation don't allow us to establish a rhythm, they can be difficult to master using orchestral speech. However, we can create a rhythm by incorporating them into larger phrases. For example, if someone asks me my name, normally I just reply Paul. But if I think I'll have difficulty saying Paul on its own, I can always incorporate it into the longer phrase, my name is Paul. This phrase enables me to establish a rhythm because it contains four syllables rather than just one. And because the first three syllables don't really matter, I don't really have to say them very loudly. In fact, I can just mouth them silently or even just say them in my inner speech. The only word that I have to say out loud is the last one, Paul. If I use this technique, the important thing is that I say my name in time to the overall rhythm that I've established thanks to the first three words. When you have some free time, experiment with this in order to get a feel for how it can help. It doesn't really matter what words you add to establish a rhythm. If you want, you can simply count down silently in your head or silently mouthing three, two, one. For example, three, two, one. One, Paul. If you don't like the idea of adding extra words to create a rhythm, an alternative is to take a short in-breath immediately before starting to say the word. This is a method used in the, in the Maguire program. The in-breath just acts like a timing cue, so it shouldn't be a particularly big or deep one. So for example, Paul, Paul, Paul. A further possibility is to combine the in-breath with counting down in your head. So you start by counting three, two, one, then on the next beat, you take the in-breath, then on the beat after that, you say your name. So for example, three, two, one, Paul. <coughs> three, two, one, Paul. When you're alone, it's a good idea to devote some time to experimenting with these strategies to see which one you find easiest to use. And then practice that strategy to the point where you've learned it well enough to enable you to employ it without having to think about it. When you first start, you may find it helpful to use a metronome to ensure that you maintain the planned rhythm.